Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the CIO Conversation Series. Uh, after a one-week break for Memorial Day weekend, this is Tim McCusker, Chief Investment Officer of NEPC. And I'm really excited to have with us today George Walker, the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Newberger Berman. George, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for including me, Tim. Absolutely. And George, we're going to spend some time today going around the world and, and getting uh, your view of everything that's going on. Um, we'll spend some time on the future of the asset management industry. Uh, and as as you emailed me this morning, I thought it was a, a great way to frame things. Who'd have, who'd have thought as we had conversations leading up to this, who'd have thought that COVID uh, would would kind of go down on the list of the most important things to talk about? And, and I think it is really important that we address uh, everything going on in the country today. And, and George, I know you want to make some comments as well. Um, what's been so striking to me as I've thought about it is just uh, this really shines a light on how much work still needs to be done in the United States uh, regarding racial inequality um, and trying to make things more fair. Uh, I think at NEPC, we've focused on creating an inclusive, inclusive culture uh, in our workplace and as individuals trying to have inclusive cultures in our communities. Uh, we focused on the work that we do and how that supports the missions of our clients. And we can feel good that so much critical work is happening to support communities across the country through that work. And internally, we're, we're proud of the work we're doing to improve diversity. We know how important diversification is in building an investment portfolio. And we've really tried to make it a focus for us to improve our diversity to improve our decision making. And we've set goals for our managers to improve diversity in our organization. We've set goals for our research team to improve diversity in manager research. Uh, and, and with all that, I, and we've tried to come at that from uh, in, in the best intentions possible. Um, what, what the last week reveals is that that's not enough. Uh, we addressed this on our internal team call, all company call yesterday. and. I think we're hopeful that this pushes us forward, both uh, NEPC as an organization, the investment industry in general, and the country overall. Um, like a lot of folks, we don't have answers right now of what pushing us forward looks like, but we're committed to having open, honest conversations about this, and that's both internally and externally with the investment manager community and with our clients. And we're committed to figuring out how we further our efforts and, and how we move this forward in a consistent way over time. Uh, so George, I'll turn it to you. I know you wanted to make some comments as well. Uh, Newberger's a large, diverse organization, so I'm sure you've got some perspectives on this. Yeah, I would. Thank you, Tim, and, and happy to, to talk about it and answer any questions. And if folks want to follow up and, and you know learn from what we're doing or, or have uh, suggestions we we'd sure be eager to share you know I, I think um, the the past few weeks have been uh, heartbreaking reminders for us of uh, our country's continued struggle to address what is in many respects its original sin of of racism um, and you know at times we thought we were perhaps further than uh, than, than 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 we are which you know I've spent a lot of uh, the past day, certainly talking to, to African American colleagues of, of mine, and you know, it's uh, they're, they're hurting, um, and it's uh, it's a uh, you know, folks have intense uh, intense feelings, uh, appropriately so, about uh, you know about fairness, um, and I think we all, frankly, have a bit of a, a sense of helplessness right now, just given that the problem is so big um, that uh, it's hard for any one individual or, or any company to uh, to make an enormous difference, but we're trying hard to to stand with our our black colleagues um, and to to you know help uh, help folks be able to make a contribution at the firm um, in in their community uh, through uh, you know everything from from voting as President Obama suggested in in state and local elections where we're doing uh, where we're doing a lot of work to you know, signing petitions to, to donating to a series of organizations to, you know, frankly, learning um, about this such that we can can better understand uh, uh, one another, because it's clear that uh, we have a long way to go on on that front, too. So I'm hopeful that 
that some good can uh, can come out of uh, can come out of these very uh, you know these very very dark days. Well, thanks, George, for those comments. Um, and I think we'll we'll turn to uh, the discussion of of COVID and uh, more of an investment focused discussion. But I encourage anyone who uh, wants to ask further questions about that or discuss that further. Um, and for any questions, um, you have your chat box on the side of the um, go to webinar panel. So feel free to throw some questions in there, and we'll we'll spend some time at the end chatting with George about that. Uh, George, it's been a while now that we've been working from home. Uh, crazy to think, uh, depending on each organization and, and when they made the move to get out of the office, we're coming up on three full months now. Uh, how, just for you personally first, how was that adjustment to working from home? And, and then for Newberger Berman overall, that, that transition process of moving a big organization to remote almost entirely, take us through that process a little bit. Sure. Um, so for for me personally, uh, it's been sort of surprisingly easy. Um, I'm camped out with uh, uh, with my wife, who is a portfolio manager, and our our four young children. So there is uh, there's a, a reasonable amount of chaos uh, in the home, but it's uh, you know it's it's actually in certain respects been a been a sort of special time to. Uh, uh, to be with them, particularly we have a, a, a three-year-old who is usually asleep when I go to the office and usually asleep when I get home, and so getting to to spend so much time with him has uh, has has sort of been a real uh, a real blessing. Um, and you know, in in terms of the firm, um, I, I I don't think our experience is materially different from most other major asset management firms, and I spend a lot of time talking to to, to peers. Um, I think we all have been surprised at how um, seamless the transition is. We we got a bit of a head start when we had a uh, a flooding issue that impacted at a at some sort of central station that that took out the power in our headquarters. In, but in one building and only one building uh, last year for about a week. And so, you know, since our offices are on, on many floors, some up in the 40s, um, we, we couldn't have people walk up that many flights of stairs. Uh, and so we, we had done a brief version of work from home uh, last year, which served as, as good preparation. But we took our New York office down from, I think, 1,150 people down to four um, pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, and I'd say, you know, it's gone, it's gone surprisingly well, um, in terms of the infrastructure, you know, I'd give sort of an A, a plus to, um, uh, the volumes initially were, you know, sort of record volumes, which were extraordinary. Um, the client connectivity, I think has been, has been terrific. In many respects, we feel closer to our clients today um, than than we did beforehand. Um, and uh, you know, internally, um, the teamwork has been quite good, and, and frankly, quite different. It's been interesting. We've uh, we've 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 learned uh, we've learned a lot. Um, um, but it's uh, overall been a been a terrific experience. I don't know, you know, how at some level we're eager to get back into the office. Um, and reconnect with uh, with one another. Is there some some uh, some cost to being separated and some half life uh, of of the goodwill and the relationships uh, that have that have been built that need to be uh, to be re re reformed? Um, but but so far, if you you know, infinitely better than uh, certainly than I feared. That's great. Uh, two follow ups. One one internal. One thinking a little more externally. Uh, how are you thinking through that return to work? What uh, timing? What that looks like? And then, second question related to that, you mentioned uh, being close to clients, feeling closer to clients, which is awesome. I think the way everyone's embraced technology, both internally and externally. But how are you thinking about uh, individuals, client service folks, portfolio managers getting back out on the road? Yeah. Um, uh... So the I'm sorry. What was the first part of the question? Was just, I was uh, about return to office. Sorry, I gave you oh a return to office. Yeah, timing there. 
So uh, what, what I've said direction, we were, we, were, we were pretty aggressive about getting folks out of the office early. Uh, and what I've told people is, you know, this is the only time that the firm is allowed to be in the fourth quartile. Uh, and so we're, I'm very happy to be late uh, uh, in that regard with regards to, uh, to returning to the office. Um, I don't think we have to, to, to push back in. And I, if we're going to make an error, I'd rather err on the side of being late than uh, on the side of uh, on the side of being early. Um, we're going to start opening uh, the office in New York, um, you know, sort of unofficially. I think around June fifteenth. I think officially um, uh, a little bit later in the month uh, for volunteers um, and volunteers only. And our expectation, we, we've we've been pretty aggressive about surveying our folks. Um, how are they doing? What do they need? Would they come back to work? What issues do they have? So on and so forth. Um, you know, my guess is that New York will, will get about 15% of the people. So, so quite modest. Um, and then we frame for folks the expectation that uh, we'll be back to, to quote, work as normal uh, after Labor Day. Now, my sense is that, that work as normal um, is not going to be the old normal and it's not even going to be the new normal. It'll be, you know, some sort of interim stage, you know, pre-vaccine stage where we might have go back to, to rotating teams or, or the like. So it won't, uh, it won't be a, a jump back to, to January, uh, to January behavior. Um, but I, and, and so, you know, directionally, that's it. If you want to be back in the office, we'll, we'll find a way to get you back in uh, this month. If you if you don't want to be in the office, that's fine. Um, uh, plan on coming back in in September, and we'll we'll figure out together um, what that means. And if you have any individual concerns, your health, you know, um, uh, comorbidity issues, or uh, uh, somebody at home, uh, we've told folks to talk to us, and and you know we have we have some folks who have um, um, you know immune system issues who. Frankly, I, I don't expect to see them back in the office, um, you know, this calendar year. So we'll sure. make uh, make arrangements for them. That's great. And and how about um, folks getting back out on the road to see clients? Yeah, that's that's been interesting. So we we haven't, um, you know, we haven't uh, been pushing folks uh, to do it, and and it really hasn't happened. You know, at the end of the day, we're going to when clients tell us they want us to come to their offices, which which so far they they haven't will there will be a period where we will let our folks do that. We don't you know, we, we intend to allow things to happen as opposed to to to, to pushing um, uh, and asking folks to do it. So I, my hunch is it's still going to be some time before people are are traveling uh, for, for work related things. I would guess that there would be some in people's individual local communities and we have, you know, offices, uh, around the country and around the world. Um, but I don't, I don't see a, uh, a, a huge amount of, uh, of plane travel in the, in the near term. Right. Uh, I don't see it frankly before September. Yeah. Um, Everyone's airline status is going down the toilet. It's going to be tough. <laughs> you know, exactly. Uh, so, Speaking of um, offices around the world, uh, can you share any differences you've seen across countries in the the way the shutdown is impacting your employees or or how how you do business in different regions? Yeah, the uh, so the first region, you know, the first office that we shut down was uh, was Shanghai um, for obvious reasons, and the first office uh, that was fully back up and running was uh, was was Shanghai. Uh, so that uh, has, uh, you know, for quite some time, we've back, been back to uh, 100% staffing. Um, we're back to about 80% in Hong Kong. Uh, in Tokyo, we went in, we came back out, we're going back in now, um, partially. So it's, uh, um, you know, Western Europe, and you know, we've got uh, an, an office in Milan that was, you know, was out was out fairly early. Western Europe and the U.S. are on the on sort of similar timelines. I wouldn't be surprised if, for example, you know, Chicago, just given the, you know, given the, uh, that city's numbers, uh, may well be later, uh, for example, than uh, than New York. Where you know, I'd say New York, our 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 first official opening for folks who want to come back, 
will likely coincide with sort of the what the governor is calling phase two, um, um, and that that'll occur at uh, that'll occur at different uh, different times. But yeah, so there are big di big differences. Everybody in uh, China was sort of eager to eager to get back to work. I think um, folks in our our Japan office, um, you know, we, we we struggle to we we spend so much time telling them to take care of themselves and protect themselves and their family, and you know, we we frankly couldn't get them to leave uh, the office during the the in the midst of the the nuclear meltdown scare um, really? a few wow. a few years ago, and so. Um, so I, yeah, I remember the conversation begging them to leave. Oh and they said, God. George, you know, it's not so much about, you, you know, it's not about you. It's not even about Newberg or Bourbon. This is like our honor and we're going to, we're going to, you know, this is important to us and we're sending a statement uh, to our clients and we're going to stay. We've sent our families away from Tokyo, but we're staying. So wow. uh, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're cultural, there are cultural distinctions as well uh, in, uh, in different places, but yeah, so we have very well have different, well have individual repopulation plans that will differ from Milan to New York to 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 Chicago to Shanghai. Interesting, and so you mentioned Shanghai. Um, you've got a fairly substantial business in China. Uh, China would be another item that uh, that recently has made a lot of headlines and maybe uh, goes above COVID in terms of conversations and headspace. What's what's your view, maybe a little background on doing business in China and then your view of how how the U.S.-China uh, tension evolves and how investing in China evolves. A lot there, but I'll let you pick that apart. Sure. Um, so we started um, quite a long while ago managing global portfolios for 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 Chinese investors, so for the you know NSSFs, the Chinese Social Security Systems, and CICs, and 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 China Life, and others are all publicly known sort of relationships. Uh, and then we built uh, in starting in uh, uh, February, I think, of 2008. Um, strange timing. Uh, a, a domestic uh, a domestic uh, Chinese equity team. And have been, you know, expanding over time since then. So trying to to help uh, Chinese investors invest outside of China and global investors um, invest into China. We have subsequently built a fixed income team, um, another equity team, a quant equity team, the asset class team, and the and 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 the like. Um, you know, now for for us, the big commercial uh, opportunity, which has been closed to us. Is the is the opportunity to manage Chinese assets for Chinese individuals? That opportunity dwarfs um, the money going in, money going out um, uh, chance. And so uh, we and BlackRock um, have been the the first two firms who've been invited to apply uh, for uh, for a, a domestic mutual fund license. And I think we're one of the first five firms to get a, a Woofy license. Although that really sort of constrains um, what what you can do, um, and so you know we're 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 um, you know we're, we're we're committed to to to, to building um, to building in China. Uh, certainly, the tension between the U.S. Uh, uh, and China is uh, is unfortunate. I you know as a as a human being. Um, believe that you know many of the world's great problems uh, have a far better chance of being solved uh, if we can find common ground and and, and work together um, on them you know think uh, think climate change uh, than on the the current path we're going down which is uh, uh, which is you know not necessarily uh, um, constructive so you know I think though there's Few things uh, that generate as much bipartisan support in Washington as as get tough on 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 China measures. I think um, China will, you know, there's still more cards to be turned over um, in terms of COVID and how forthcoming uh, the Chinese were uh, with the global community. Um, 
about uh, about the disease. And so, you know, our expectation is that there's going to be a prolonged period of, of strategic um, conflict, uh, frankly, between uh, um, between the, the two countries. But hopefully the you know, there will be less damage done in, in, in terms of things like trade, uh, you know, given given the fragile state, frankly, of both of our economies and uh, and 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 the world. Um, so we we are uh, you know we're 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 committed to building there, um, and in terms of investing in China, continue to see um, you know terrific opportunities, particularly amongst the sort of non SOE companies. There's some you know some great individual um, medium sized uh, Chinese firms, some great Chinese you know large technology firms that. Uh, uh, that we all that we all know well, and I think a lot of opportunity in uh, in uh, Chinese fixed income markets, um, all of which are are increasingly important, and frankly, all of which are pretty materially underrepresented in non Chinese clients' uh, portfolios. Uh, when you look at the world as a as sort of a percent of uh, of, of market cap or of uh, um, of economic activity, so. We're we're hopeful that uh, the countries will find ways to to cooperate and um, you know what's been a little strange is in you know money management has been one of the few businesses that just frankly hasn't been allowed to participate at all um, right. in in China uh, and so the you know their McDonald's has been operating in China successfully for for forever um and and we we literally haven't haven't been able to participate at all and so the Trump administration's um arguments that uh that that, that industry has been closed to many of us on the phone you know frankly ring ring very ring very true but i think that's changing now and i think it you know the the chinese view it is in their best interest to change it why they you know, if they were, if you were meeting with senior Chinese officials, they would say they want some tough global uh, organizations to come in to, to frankly improve standards um, and to to help them do a better job. Their domestic industry do a better job of uh, of delivering for Chinese savers, uh, and so you know they're they're willing to sacrifice some some amount of market share. Uh, to to up everybody's game, and I think that I think that we'll be able to do that. That's great. That's that's really helpful to understand that better. Um, let's let's turn to the investment industry more specifically because you talked a little bit about that. Um, I'll ask you first. Uh, just what are what are the themes that you see in the future for asset management? What what were those themes going into COVID? And as you go through those themes, if you can talk about how they've how they've either shifted or been enhanced uh, because of this experience as you started out with uh, working from home and everyone embra embracing technology. Um, oh, that's interesting. Um, you know, I, I don't think, I, I don't know how, how significantly COVID is going to change the strategic uh, forces that are driving change in the money management business. I think you know there are a number of which all of which you know we all on the phone know well there's you know sort of active passive i think active managers have um depends on which survey you look at but you know by and large done quite well particularly in equities during um during this period but i don't think that it's going to stop or or even you know hinder the uh, the continued flow of of capital uh, to passive, or my expectation remains that uh, that that'll continue. I do think a lot of what's happening there, though, is a you know is really a, a high is more a fee discussion um, mm -hmm. as opposed to as opposed necessarily to uh, to active uh, to active active passive. Um, but you know, we we see it. We we have larger businesses, for example, in in small cap. Than we do in large cap. We, you know, we tend to focus on places where it's easier to outperform. Um, so, we, you know, small cap uh, versus versus large cap are are you know our, our small cap managers have had a, a really extraordinary period over the course of this past year. They've uh, 
have amazing long-term records, but this has been um, their greatest period, uh, I think, of, 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 of outperformance. Um, in part, just given our, our, our sort of quality quality um, quality bias, we tend to you know have have large businesses in in non-U.S. and emerging markets. Uh, so I, I don't in U.S. mega cap growth. I, I think passive will passive and or or you know very uh, low fee uh, or well aligned uh, um, active portfolios will uh, uh, will continue to. Uh, to, to gain share, you know, I think that uh, there will continue to be big fee pressure um, throughout the the industry. We think our our fixed income business um, has has grown um, has grown substantially over the course of the the past uh, the past you know 15 years that uh, um, that I've uh, that I've witnessed it. I, I think the the low rate environment that is likely to stay with us for longer, longer as a result of COVID, uh, certainly than uh, than we expected, means that uh, as as the Fed works so hard to chase us all out of Treasuries, um, the opportunity for for firms to manage capital uh, for you know insurance companies, for example, who who um, are quite comfortable in IG, but but might want to partner in in non IG or in EMD or other places. So I I think it'll be a good period. You know, March was uh, obviously a disaster for uh, from a flow perspective for uh, 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 for fixed income managers. But I think my hunch is that uh, we'll have a, a, a number of years of uh, of of quite uh, of quite terrific flows, and I think we'll continue to see, you know, continue to see flows towards uh, uh, towards towards private markets. Um, people again are going to be struggling for yield and struggling for returns, um, and I think the you know also the the lack of the lack of vol, even if it is. Um, even in places where we all know it's not real, right? That it's mark mark related as opposed to uh, as opposed to substantive. I think is you know is helpful for 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 some institutions. So I would I would guess we'll continue. The private equity industry will continue to grow. Um, the hedge fund space will continue to be under pressure. Um, and uh, you know the 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 big passive guys will be bigger. I think it'd be really tough to be the number four. Passive player. I think the you know the the we've all looked at so many industry profitability charts and then commodity driven businesses. The percent of profits that go to number one and number two are are overwhelming. You don't want to be number four. So I think that'll be tough. But I think there's a lot of space for for firms that are are you know good stock pickers and uh, and and solid investors. Um, I think the trend towards globalization is gonna is gonna continue. So I, I don't I don't. COVID, in my mind, is uh, may speed up some of those trends. It, it, you know, speeding up perhaps a little bit how we're we're utilizing uh, uh, data and. Uh, um, no, mommy, you'll be right back. Sorry, my uh, <laughs> um, <it's, laughs> my three-year-old just emerged. That's life, in, life working from home. That's part of the deal. We're all, it's uh, it's good to get that. <laughs> Um, I'll I'll jump in and, and talk for a minute while you while you deal with that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, as as the head of an asset management firm, George, I, it would be great to get your perspective on how you think about those fee discussions. Uh, I think from from a, a consultant perspective, from a client perspective, we're we're looking to get the best terms we can for clients uh, for for investors. Uh, we're trying to do it in a way that um, makes it fair for both sides. We, we don't want to just ratchet fees down as low as they can go so a manager can't have a successful business. Uh, but when, when you look at it from an asset manager's perspective, if it's a 50 basis point product and investors are coming to you asking for a five basis point discount, you know, if you just think, well, five basis points, what's that? Well, that's from a business perspective, that's a 10% cut on your pricing. How do you, how do you think through those kind of conversations uh, and, and have those conversations effectively with with consultants with investors. Yeah, I, I, I um, you know, we we have the benefit, frankly, of being a, a private um, employee owned 
firm. Um, so we're able to, you know, we don't have another mouth to feed, uh, it, whether that's a large corporate parent or, or public shareholders. And so yep. that makes it, you know, frankly, a little bit easier and enables us to, to think in terms of, you know, folks, uh, um, folks career horizons as opposed to, to um, putting pressure on ourselves, putting the same pressure on ourselves that we do on other, <laughs> on other companies. Right. Um, uh, so, you know, listen, we lower fees for clients at the end of the day are a, are a good thing. That's progress. We exist to serve, we exist to serve clients and to, to help them achieve, you know, their, their, um, their unique uh, investment objectives, and so we, we we welcome the conversation where it's possible. Um, you know, in non commingled vehicles, we will try and turn it into okay. How do you know? Is is there a way to create better long term alignment without uh, without creating so much complexity that uh, we we spend more uh, reporting uh, than we do uh, than we do on on other things. Uh, but our, you know, we're we're, it's a fairly efficient market out there, and uh, so uh, you guys certainly aren't afraid to have the conversation with us, and I think that's uh, on, on behalf of your clients. And uh, uh, but I think you, you all have, you know, have been fair, and uh, um, so we 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 well, you know, we I shouldn't say we're excited about them, we're not, but we yeah. we welcome them and recognize that's how. Uh, that's uh, how progress gets made. Great. Uh, another major trend uh, that uh, you, you probably would have mentioned, maybe, maybe your three-year-old was coming in to remind you of it, uh, is ESG. Uh, tell us a little bit about what Newberg is doing around ESG and, and how you see the industry evolving there. George, do we have you still? Uh-oh. Seems like we may have may have lost George here, which is unfortunate. Um, so I think we'll give him a few seconds to see if we can get him back. Um, hoping in these last uh, last 10 minutes or so of the discussion um, to uh, maybe shift some of those themes from, um, I think, largely public market focused themes to wondering if those themes carry over to the private markets. Um, as many of you know, Newberger Berman has a really well established business um, in private markets in general, but also um, dial partners investing in uh, in hedge fund and private market strategies. So they have both the, the private markets investing perspective, uh, but also the um, the perspective of investing in some of these businesses. So I think it'd be great to get into that. If we can get George back, and certainly um, as we've done with all of these sessions, hoping that uh, we have a few minutes at the end for the lightning round with George, which is always fun. Um, but unfortunately, we have not gotten him back yet, which is too bad. Let's see if we can get him back here. Thanks everyone for being patient as we try to Tim? try to Tim is that George Tim hey yeah. sorry about that no problem glad to have you back great <laughs> sorry the uh, the three year old got the phone jack out of the wall <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, he's determined to get some playtime with you one way or another that is impressive yes, so his, uh, his mother left and went on a walk I apologize. Um, he's got uh, he's got a future as a salesperson. He's persistent. I like it. Um, so I don't know if you caught my my question before uh, before he took over, but I was asking about ESG and what what Newberg yeah. is doing there and your your perspective on um, how the industry will evolve there. Um, incredibly important uh, to us. I, I do think it's interesting. So we spent you know there are a lot of uh, debate on whether. This crisis will cause greater or lesser focus on ESG. A number of folks have thought that uh, 
that frankly they would cause less so because we'd all be appropriately focused on employment and, and, and just getting people back to work and, and income replacement. I think we're going to see the opposite. Um, candidly, is is important investors and pools of, of capital are more focused um, on the long term uh, impacts of uh, of decisions and on dealing with uh, um, you know dealing with important crises uh, um, beforehand. And so I, I think uh, um, you know ESG has been a, a big focus of ours. Um, I think it will help us in the intermediate term that um, ESG portfolios for us, but, but I think for all folks, um, have done well. Part of it is their quality bias. Part of it is, you know, frankly, less in, 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 in fossil fuels um, uh, than, in, uh, than, than is true in benchmarks. So I, I would guess that, uh, that we're going to see more, um, more ESG focus. What we've tried to do there, we built a you know, we built a, a, a robust team. We have changed our, our whole research process uh, in really integrated ESG. We've tried particularly to focus on engagement. So it's not just about the securities. It's also about, you know, show document for me that you have made a judgment um, as a, a PM and a research professional what the one or two issues that matter most for a particular firm are. And then show me how you've engaged with that firm. Um, you know, show me that you've talked to the CEO uh, about this issue. And uh, I think it's been uh, it's been terrific. The most recent thing we've done there is we we are now I think the f uh, first, at least that I'm aware of, in the the U.S. Um, asset manager that is going out and pre-announcing um, uh, proxy votes. Um, and we started just with 25, um, and the press has sort of picked up a, a number of them. Uh, and so we're trying to, to say uh, you know, these are companies folks. that we believe in, um, but uh, want want investors to know uh, how we're voting, and uh, um, that you know they're they choose to join us. Um, terrific. So that was, so that I was going to ask what what's the benefit of pre-announcing it so that there's transparency for those that haven't made their decision yet that they can if they yeah, understand I think, the logic for exactly. it exactly yeah. exactly and 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 you know listen we all know that the 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 ISS and Glass Lewis of the world given their staffing model and the number of things they're trying to vote on are incredibly stretched and so we're we're trying to say these are companies we know exceptionally well. We've spent a huge amount of time with, um, have deep insight, and and you know we have a we have a, a, a point of view, and we're happy to share it, um, and hopefully you know that'll that'll really contribute to uh, to corporate governance. The first one Great. we did was for a, for a large company where we came out and said you know what the senior guys get get paid too much. Um, the head of the comp committee has been to like one uh, one board meeting. Um, we talked to the company about it last year. They told us they'd clean it up and fix it. They haven't. And so we still love the stock. We've been a long-term investor. This doesn't make sense. It's not fair. It's not right. Um, and, uh, you know, that makes our relationship with the company a little bit more challenging. But uh, uh, we think it's the right thing to do and hope that, that other asset management firms uh, we'll start to do that as well. Great. Um, I want to turn to one more thing. I, I let everyone know that I would um, t ask you this while while you were reconnecting. Uh, I, I do want to share. We do have some questions coming in, and remind everyone to use that chat box if you'd like to ask a question here. We had a great comment come in from one of the listeners. Uh, I wanted to share it here. No worries from the listener perspective. The interruption of call makes this so human and personal. Uh, so thank you for that. I know, I know my, my team knows that I'm not immune to those interruptions with a, a 10, 8, and 5-year-old running around here. So uh, it's, I think that's one of the great things about this whole lockdown experience has been uh, how understanding everyone is that uh, we're all in a different childcare situation now and we've all got different living situations and everyone being flexible about that has, uh, has been a great thing about this. Uh, well, so thank George, you. I think Last I will question. call up we'll probably... meeting for this evening. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, 
Last question for me, you talked about some of those major themes in asset management. Um, the great thing about talking to you today is you've got a real multi-asset perspective at Newberger, uh, both across asset classes, but across liquidity. You've got a private markets capability. You've also got dial. We'd love to hear if you think those same trends carry over to the alternative side, both from um, an investor perspective of capital markets investing in private equity, uh, but also from the dial perspective, investing in some of these asset management business on the businesses on the alternative side. What, what do you see happening in, on that side of the world in the future? Yeah, so you know, we we I'd say the the same trends the same trends apply, which is you know we think that uh, the private equity space again is gonna is gonna continue um, to grow and expand and look to that to to continue to be a growth business. Um, uh, which is where the bulk of, of our, um, our our energies um, are spent now in terms of investing new capital. Um, you know, the hedge fund space um, has been challenged, but we think managers who have, you know, world-class teams, truly different processes, um, you know, great technology um, and, and unique philosophies and processes will continue to, uh, you know, continue to be able to differentiate themselves. We believe, you know, there's a, a money management space in a, in a great business and believe that it's probably better owned in private hands um, than, in, uh, than in public market hands. And so I think that uh, uh, Dial uh, and, and others in, in the space provide a terrific solution for for those groups, um, that need capital, or where where you know they're going through a, a, a generational change, um, and to be able to enable them to uh, to continue to invest in and in, invest and grow. So we're we're excited about uh, you know we're excited about the franchise, excited about the long term returns there, um, and it would expect to see continued growth um, uh, in the you know in the in the private space writ large. Okay, uh, we do have a couple questions coming in, so we'll hit those. Uh, the first, George, you mentioned um, you see a lot of opportunity in China. You, you, you talked about some of those areas and in, um, individual companies in, in Chinese bonds uh, and, and NEPC, we would agree with the concept that you laid out that um, investors are under allocated to China. Um, so the question here is, how should investors, I guess, first dollar, how should investors begin increasing exposure to China? Where would you put that money to work first, given the opportunity set for that? Yeah, I don't, um, it's a great question. I don't, um, I guess I, I, I don't think about it necessarily as much that way. I think about it a bit more in the context of coming at it by your traditional, you know, traditional asset classes and saying, okay, in the context of my, in the context of my, uh, uh, my equity uh, portfolio or my fixed income portfolio. What's a, you know, what's a what's a prudent allocation, and do I want to have that uh, be part of a broader EM uh, E mandate, or do I want to hire a uh, um, do I want to hire a specialist manager, either because of, of sizing or because of opportunity? So I, I I would I would look at both, um, and you know as Frankly, with 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 most things, I would uh, I would initially under you know if you're going from a, a essentially a zero weight or particularly low, I would um, I would wait in rather than uh, um, than, than, than rushing in and um, um, you know move move forward and diversify sort of over over time. But I do think that that's you know China's an incredibly important market. It's going to be an you know continue to remain. Uh, uh, a, a huge part of the, the global uh, economic engine, and I think folks are going to want to have uh, material exposure, whether that's through a, a MAC mandate, broader global mandates, or or discrete country specific mandates. Okay, great. And then the other question that we have here, and then we'll turn to the the lightning round for some fun to wrap up. Um, I, what I think is a really interesting question here. Uh, we spent a good amount of time talking about how uh, within your organization, folks are interacting differently uh, because of working from home and, and how um, there's 
some ability to interact with clients in that way as well. Uh, from an investment management perspective, I'm sure there's an, an element of uh, your business, at least with some of your teams, where they're meeting with management. Uh, do you think the way that those investors interact with companies will change in terms of embracing technology, not going on site, or, or will they get out there and, and see the world in the same way? I do. I mean, I, I, I think the reality is right now our folks are able to be more efficient and company managements are able to be more efficient. So I think if you look at overall corporate access, um, more companies have spent more time with investors. Uh, uh, they've just spent, you know, uh, they've spent less time going to the airport and, 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 you know, driving to the hotel and, uh, and doing the like. And so my sense is um, that over time, we're going to find that travel will be as much a part of sort of relationship formation um, and that, that meetings on the road will end up being sort of longer meetings. Uh, and, you know, maybe you have a meal. Um, I, I think I've played two rounds of client golf in the past couple of years. Maybe there's, maybe there's actually, you know, more, Maybe CEOs are, are, are spending time a, a little bit doing that, but the bulk of what we're doing in terms of conveying information um, will be uh, um, will be done via Zoom because it's just it's just very 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 efficient, um, and, and so I would expect that uh, that travel will be less, but less indifferent. That the meetings will be longer and less of kind of the the, the quick road shows. Hmm, that's great. Uh, well, let's turn to the lightning round here. This has been an awesome conversation, and I know everyone enjoys wrapping up uh, just hearing uh, a little bit more about the fun side of things. Uh, so, George, what's the thing you miss the most while in lockdown? Uh, restaurants. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I miss them for two reasons. One, I miss going out into uh, uh, I'm on a, uh, a – I announced that I was going to do a diet, and uh, – but now uh, my my family can actually monitor that diet. <laughs> so I both miss restaurants and I miss uh, I miss eating. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, how about a pleasant surprise while while you've been stuck at home? Um, for me, it's been uh, um, you know aside from uh, uh, my three year old walking through cords, um, it's been uh, it's been it's been magical to be able to spend this much time with uh with my kids so i i i spent a lot of time uh traveling and uh this is you know and and i unfortunately have you know i i, I love spending time having dinners with colleagues and companies and clients and uh the ability to have dinner every night with uh with my wife and kids is uh has been has been great so i i think this will uh i'll look back incredibly fondly on this crazy period in, in that regard in five years time. That's a, that's an awesome way to look at it. I'll, I'll ask you another pleasant question. Uh, what's something you're really looking forward to this summer? Uh, I am looking forward to uh, playing some golf. Uh, oh, nice. Would be good. Looking forward to playing some tennis, looking forward to uh, uh, cheering. I hope for uh, I'm, I'm from St. Louis originally. And so, am uh, really excited about the abbreviated NHL schedule uh, and, you know, the hope that there we'll get to see some, uh, some baseball as well. Uh, and I miss, uh, you know, I'm excited to spend time with friends. So we, we've, we've sort of quarantined with a couple who we, who we see, uh, who we see periodically a couple of friends, but uh, there are, you know, just a lot of folks who, uh, who I haven't gotten to, to see and give a hug to, and I'm I'm excited to do that. That's great. Uh, how about a show, movie, or book you've enjoyed during this stretch? Uh, the last uh, book I read was uh, was Dark Towers, uh, which is about uh, I'm just staring at it on my desk. Deutsche Bank, Donald Trump, and an epic tale of destruction. Um, I love. <laughs> for some reason, I'm always drawn to disaster, both books and a uh, few. If you were to to look at the art that we hang on the walls that I uh, purchased, it's all some kind of disaster related. Um, I think working in this uh, working in this industry has uh, has caused me to be preoccupied with uh, with things that can go wrong, 
Uh, uh, it's an interesting book. It's a super quick read. It's basically what happens if you have bad incentives and a bad culture, um, and and what that does to what that does to to even good human beings. Um, so uh, interesting, quick read. Okay, interesting. I'll check that one out. Uh, the thing that people are not talking or worried about enough is blank. Um, long term, big issues. Um, in in that, um, y- y- you know, I, I just think this is uh, this is a big moment for democracy, and uh, uh, I, 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 you know, it, and it's a scary period. It's a scary period. I'm. I'm, I'm Watching the television, as I'm sure many of you are, and looking at you know protests going around um, the, the the country in arrests, um, and uh, the the fiscal shape uh, of the the country on the the backside of this, and I just think it's a um, it's a it's a big moment um, in terms of what is a world that we're going to be leaving for 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 our kids um, and. Would, would love to see us continue to, to focus on um, big long-term um, big long-term issues and how we're gonna how we're gonna address them yeah the uh, speaking of bad incentives our political process doesn't allow us to look much past two or four years so I hope we can do that uh, yeah, to, uh, so to make promises that uh, you know to, to write checks that we don't have to pay that somebody else can pay for and make promises that uh, the folks don't deliver on and the amount of you know despair that that call has caused and will cause in uh, in the future is uh, is just staggering. Yeah. Um, how, last one. Do you have a prediction on a way our world will be permanently changed? Um, I do think a lot of this work from home stuff uh, is 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 going to be is going to be different. So the you know the way we do meetings at the firm now are <laughs> first they start on time and end on time, which is new new for us. That it's super democratic, right? Everybody has a little box, and everybody's in their box, and everybody can speak, uh, which is is great. Um, we're we're experimenting with you know we're we're not going full Bridgewater, but but experimenting with you know far more. More radical transparency, certainly than than we've seen, which is you know you show me a meeting and then let me ask why can't more people participate? Why can't we record it so that others can learn from it? Um, uh, it's uh, you know it's it's been in, in that regard uh, uh, terrific and and opening um, and you know I, I think a lot of folks have learned a ton. Uh, from one another that they hadn't when they occupied the same building, but now they're actually they're actually ironically uh, spending more time together. And I think that that folks, you know, I was one who was very skeptical of work from home. Um, uh-huh. I thought that people uh, weren't necessarily, you know, I worried that folks might be mailing it in. And uh, you know, now I uh, I was wrong, and and I think. Now that I appreciate how uh, how connected folks can be, um, I am I'm eager for us to explore you know ways at least you know uh, certain jobs perhaps for, for you know fully um, some of the middle office stuff, but 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 others. Um, I was on a uh, doing a we have uh, we have some some bonds. I was doing a call with uh, S and P or Moody's and was on with a. A mid-level member of the finance team who I didn't know as well, and said, "You know, Danny, where are you phoning in from?" And uh, I said, "Oh, I'm in Pennsylvania." I said, "You live in Pennsylvania?" I said, "Yeah." You know, how long did you take you to get in the office every morning? An hour and a half. So wow. this kid spends three hours a day commuting, uh, and is awesome. He's he's terrific. And you know, there's got to be a deal where we get some of that time, and and he gets some of that time, and uh, uh, we both. Uh, um, you know, or a heck of a lot better off for it. And so I'm excited to, you know, find ways to, uh, to explore that. And I don't know if that's a couple days a week uh, um, and it'll be different for, 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 for different roles. And there's no doubt for many functions, you know, we, we need to have people together and to build a culture and to mentor and to, to train. And uh, so, um, but, but, but there's a lot of, 
there's a lot to explore there that I think is is exciting and can actually help us build uh, um, build a stronger uh, a stronger investment team and a stronger investment culture. Well, George, that's a great way to wrap up. This has been an awesome conversation. We really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much for joining us and and sharing your thoughts with with NEPC and and with our clients. Well, thank you, Tim. We're 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 uh, on behalf of uh, young Otis Walker. <laughs> thank you, thank you for your patience and kindness. Um, if there is, uh, you know, anything uh, we can do to be helpful, if folks want to know what we're doing um, in terms of engaging our employees uh, during this difficult period, happy to share all of that. If folks want to, you know. See our work from home plan so that they can can copy them and use them. Happy to happy to share that. Uh, yeah. Folks want to see what we're doing on the ESG front. Happy to you know we're 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 eager to uh, we're eager to be good partners and eager to share and uh, grateful for the opportunity to to spend time with you, Tim. Thanks, George, and thanks for that offer, um, everyone. I hope you can join us next week uh, for another stimulating conversation. We'll have, uh, at the same time, Tuesday, 4.15, we'll have Robert Smith, uh, the founder and chairman of Vista Equity Partners, to talk more about technology um, and private markets investing. So once again, thank you, George. If you, and uh, thank you, if you for joining. If, I didn't realize Robert was speaking next time. If you have not read Robert's note to, to his employees um, that he sent yesterday, it's, uh, it's incredibly moving. Um, oh, great. and would, uh, would, would, would beg folks to look at that before next Tuesday. Thank you for sharing that, George. We'll definitely do that. Take care. Take care, everyone. Be well.